Okay, Maya. Hello, I'm Maya Hull and I work for the Highland Council Historic Environment Team. My job is to help maintain the historic environment record. The HER, as it's known, is a record of all known historical and archaeological sites within the region. It also has a record of events and investigations associated with, um, with these sites. Um, and we update um, records uh, with reports and photographs, which it's all available and free online for you to look at. Um, I spent six months specifically updating the HER to include uh, community projects, two of which you can see here. This is the Applecross Brock uh, community excavation and Evanton, the airfield project, which is run by Arch. Um, if you want to read the reports, um, go online, have a look. They can be inspiration for your own projects. Um, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, so please have a look. And I'm at a stand outside, so if you want to know more, come and talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we now call to the stage Vicky from Fort Community Centre, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, what we want to look at is um, involving local communities in practice. That's not us. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's not us. Oh, got the wrong one around. That's us. Yep. Oh, no, nope. no, no. That's the one. Yay. <laughs> so. Putting the community back into community archaeology. We want to look at involving local communities in practice. So community comes first, and this is real community involvement, not involvement through a tendered company or individual liaison person. It offers real opportunities to adults and especially to children to experience all parts of archaeological investigation, not just popping along to do a bit of digging. Um, when people do dig, though, it's important for the experts to allow them to take pride in their finds, regardless of how significant they actually are. Communities are interested, engaged, and can make excellent contributions. Local knowledge is really invaluable. Um, this is pictures from our community dig. We had people who had really strong knowledge about the local area, were able to help us with um, things that didn't quite match up in historical documents. Um, also allowed us to answer the question, how many children can you fit in a one meter square test pit? And the answer is nine. Um, the main thing is, is that um, projects need to be developed in dialogue with local people who are experts in their own areas. Um, and not just pay lip service to community engagement. <laughs> oh, I had more to say. <laughs> Your slide at all? Yes, this is it. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'd like to introduce the technology, a framework that facilitates the easy creation of apps and trails for cultural heritage and community archaeology. Now, there are two user groups that will be interested in this technology. One is pretty much everyone in the world who is remotely interested in archaeology. And the second, and of more pertinence to this conference, is everyone here, domain experts who have things to talk about, things to share with the world. Now, this framework allows you to um, create content in form of text, images, audio, and video that um, you, you can use, are easily accessible on the World Wide Web, and as you're creating this content, they are readily pushed to users' mobile devices in, in real time. Now, it works with a mobile app that users can download on their iPads, their iPhones, and their tablets. That's pretty much all I can say about it in a minute. We're holding a, a workshop in the Highland Mandro at 345. Come there for more information and for a hands-on demonstration. Thank you. <laughs> gentlemen, um, and a warm welcome to CREEF, Centre of the Universe. Uh, this is really a big plug, no pun intended, for SSE and all the contractors and suppliers, and of course that gentle giant of Scottish archaeology, Ali Beckett of Northlight, who together delivered this wonderful reenactment, if you like, reproduction of a timber circle. The original was discovered at Pitchin Chian Farm, uh, just about a mile east of Creef, near the, the, the new campus. Um, this is also an invitation to you all, if you're not up the Glen tomorrow or going around the town, to actually go down to the campus and have a look at it. Uh, it's got atmosphere, it's got presence, and you are allowed to hug posts of various sizes. <laughs> um, Murphy's Law, uh, basically the contractor, as you can see up there, uh, was Murphy. Nothing went wrong whatsoever. And I was told it was because the tea trolley was there every three hours. So, <laughs> thank you very much.
And next we have Alan Miller from the University of St Andrews. Uh, there's a book called A View from a Hill. And hey, Alan, can I pause you? I'm not on your slide. <laughs> okay. Is this your slide? Yeah, that's my slide. Perfect, thank you. Uh, there's a book called A View from a Hill where an archaeologist has a set of binoculars. He breaks those binoculars and has to borrow some from the place that he's visiting. And what those binoculars enable this person to see is into the past. So he's able to see a murder taking place in an abbey, and so the narrative, and so the narrative evolves. So that, in a sense, is an inspiration, because I think that what I want to be involved with um, over the next um, few years is creating the technology which will enable people to wear a pair of glasses as they walk around a uh, site um, where the information has been gathered through community archaeology and to be able to see that site as it would have been in as it would have been in its prime now we're not there in terms of the technology but if you uh, come to the workshop that we have on 3d modeling and have a look at the um, stereoscopic uh, glasses that we're playing with playing with at the moment <laughs> And next we have John McCaffrey, also from the University of St Andrews. Okay, so everything we do is community. We start with community, it then gets filtered through our technology, and at the end we take it out into the community. So what I've got here is our St Kilda exhibit. Our St Kilda exhibit is essentially the North US community's view of this very famous monument uh, and site. Uh, in order in, uh, to create the interpretation, uh, we went into the community, we recorded songs, um, we used the wealth of local information and knowledge on the site, um, and, then the pro and we went into the schools. So we had people, everyone ranging from retirees who'd gone out and taken wonderful photos to children in the schools, all creating content. And then... Like I say, it ends up back in the community, so we're able to take all that content back into the schools. It's installed in the local museum, um, and it's all then available for the community to share their story. And I now call to the stage Carol Primrose from ACFA. Well, everyone else is being very positive. I'm going to be negative. I'm complaining about the loss to the community's heritage caused by the absence of archaeologists in the local authority planning department. In my local authority, an early 19th century farmhouse and a 19th century smithy were um, completely converted into private houses with complete loss of the information. That uh, mill could have been lost had it not been for the intervention of a person who lived nearby and I want to be sure that this is rectified. My local authority can manage a land, a, a, tree, a tree officer, but not an archaeologist. Planners seem to recognize, not able to recognize what involves an archaeological feature and of course um, I wouldn't suggest they do this deliberately but of course it does make life much easier for them if they let sleeping archaeologists lie. And I want to call on everybody here not to make their life easy, to make their life as <laughs> difficult as they possibly can. And now we're ready for Neil Gregory from the Royal Commission on Ancient and Historic Monuments of Scotland. Okay, as a leading orator of our generation, Gary Barlow OBE, once said, it only takes a minute. So in 60 seconds, let me bombard you with numbers about the Heritage Lottery-funded £1.65 million Scotland's Urban Past project. 
Over five years, open for business from June 2015, 60 community projects, 20 with audiences we've not engaged with before, communities in urban areas we've never worked, people with disabilities, black, Asian, minority, ethnic groups, 20 audiences we know already love their urban heritage, 20 empowering young people to learn to love their urban heritage, 70 specialised training sessions, 15 CPD training sessions in archival research, photography and surveying, 40 crowdsourcing sourcing workshops, four youth-led events, one celebratory exhibition at the end, one website, over 4,000 online contributors to Canmore, infinite possibilities for heritage trails and working with creative practitioners, infinite amounts of fun. See me later for more information. Time's out. I'm numbered out. Take that. And then to conclude the One Minute Madness, we are looking for Natasha Ferguson from Treasure Trove. Hello, uh, my name is Natasha Ferguson from the Treasure Trove unit. I'm here with my colleague Stuart Campbell. Um, our job at Treasure Trove is to help you navigate through Treasure Trove law, not to enforce it. Therefore, we are doing two workshops here to help you understand better Treasure Trove law. The first one is Treasure Trove um, and Community Archaeology. Um, if you are a volunteer, if you are a project leader, or you're thinking about doing a community project, um, and you can't answer some of the questions that are on our blurb, you need to come to our uh, workshop. Uh, we also have uh, a workshop on crash course identifying archaeological material, what do you find during your excavation? What do you do with it? How can I identify it? This is the course um, for you. We're very approachable. We want to talk to you. We want to make sure that your project runs smoothly. What happens to your excavation assemblage? Well, how do you work with volunteers? Um, and uh, how do things end up in museums? That's what we want to do today. <laughs> 